Hey there guys, welcome to another edition of Time About the Movies. Today we're looking at the movies that came out during the weekend of April 14th, 1989. And we're going to start off with a pair of teen comedies. One, one of the most memorable teen comedies of all time. The other, not so much. Uh, let's start off with Cameron Crowe's Say Anything. Take out Diane Court. Diane Court doesn't go out. She's a brain trapped in the body of a game show hostess. We don't want to see you get hurt. I want to get hurt. Diane Court. Boy Dobbler, sir. I'm an athlete, so I rarely drink. Kirk kickboxing. Never heard of kickboxing support of the future? I can see by your face, no. My point is you can relax because your daughter will be safe with me for the next seven to eight hours, sir. Obviously, this movie really doesn't need a whole lot of explanation to it. Say Anything, of course, stars John Cusack and Ioni Sky. It also has John Mahoney in it. Joan Cusack is also in this. It's one of Cameron Crowe's earliest movies. Like I said, there's really not much to talk about here. This movie is a great coming-of-age teen drama. These perfor the performances that Perry and... Perry, John Cusack and uh, Ioni Sky give are terrific. John Mahoney is great in this movie. And uh, it's just a classic movie. It's a classic ro romantic. It's a classic romantic comedy. There's the dramatic, the dramatic elements work really well. This movie has some of the best memorable moments of any teen comedy ever made. And of course, you have the the famous scene where John Cusack's holding the boombox over his head, over his, over his head when he's looking out the girl, his girlfriend's window. Just a classic movie all around, man. Just a classic romantic romantic comedy. One of Cameron Crowe's earliest movies that branch that got his name out there. Just a phenomenal movie, man. I don't think I need to say any more about that one. Say Anything is a true classic. It's one of the best movies from this year. And uh, you just saw what you just saw one of the smartest romantic comedies that the smartest high school drum high school comedies of all time. Now here's the mainstream version of that, and that is she's out of control. Something's about to happen to Doug Simpson's little girl. Happy birthday. Dad. Something sweet. Something shocking. Something with a brand new learner's permit. Something called Spike. Kyle. Mickey. I'm Barry. I'm Sonny. My name's Dad. Hello. I'm Lester. My name is Still. Doug, you can't stop life from happening. Oh, no. I can sure slow it down. Oh, yeah, how? How? Total control. Total control. Now, can one average American father put a stop to what Mother Nature's already started? Sex, sex, sex. Is that all women think about? Tony Danza, Catherine Hicks, and Amy Dolan. She's out of control. Yep, she's out of control. The movie that m made Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert contemplate ever wanting to review movies ever again. If you've ever seen the Siskel and Ebert review where they trashed this movie, she's out of control, they literally said that they almost gave up on film reviewing because of how bad this movie was. And, uh, I've been there before, man. I mean, I've seen movies where I've is the closest I've ever been to being on this level of I want, I so want to leave this job is... Whenever I saw The Spirit in theaters, back in 2008, that's the first movie I ever walked out out of a theater. It was the part where they killed the cat, and you just see the cartoonish-looking eyes in the sink. And so it's like, I'm done, and I walked out of there, I got my money back, and I was... I was just... A, it made me contemplate, thinking, why am I doing this? This, But... But you know what? Uh, they saw Say Anything the next... is Later on this day, and... They're, they were still around for a good long time, and when you watch this movie, when you see it for yourself, you can see why this movie was just a mess. It's a mess of a movie. Tony Danza, the way he looks at his daughter in this mo movie is just, it's unsettling. It's really unsettling. It's, cre 
It's really creepy looking, and all you gotta think to yourself is, what were they thinking when they made this movie? I mean, this is a mess. This is a bad, bad movie. Really bad mo movie all around. It's one of the worst movies of the year, and... Yeah, you can see why this movie made people want to quit their jobs at, at some point. But uh, like I said, she said, Say Anything came out on the same weekend. People saw that later on, and all is right with the world, I guess. So, uh, how about a comedy that's not as bad? Not, not as good as Say Anything, but certainly better than She's Out of Control. Here's Disorganized Crime. From the makers of Stakeout. Meet Nick Larkowski, safe cracker. Oh, Nick! Max Green, explosives expert. When was the last time you saw your optometrist? Carlos Barrios, enforcer. I don't do relatives. And Ray Forby, car thief. You know right, gentlemen? These four professionals have been summoned to Montana by Frank Salazar, criminal mastermind, for a very important assignment. Now, Frank's gang is organized. Frank's plan is ready. The only thing missing is Frank. Where's Frank? Where the hell is Frank? Maybe he found a woman. Maybe he got lost. The problem is Frank is on the run. No! I ain't going after him by myself. Since Corbin Burnson, Ruben Blades, Fred Gwynn, Ed O'Neill, and Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. The comedy about crime. We got him. We got him. We lost him. We found him. I'm going to kill him. Disorganized crime. Made by the same team that made Stakeout two years prior to this. Uh, this movie was pr this movie is not a great movie, but like I said, it's certainly better than She's Out of Control was. I mean, there are parts in this movie that did legitimately make me laugh. I do like some of the slapstick comedy they throw in here. It's got a great cast: Fred Gwynn, Lou Diamond Phillips, Corbett Burson, Ed O'Neill, uh, Daniel Roebuck, Ruben Blades. It's just um, it's just not it's not as good as Stakeout. Certainly, it feels like a movie that doesn't really have a whole lot of. It doesn't have a smart script to work with. Like, the heist itself is really convoluted, and there is too much of a resemblance of slapstick comedy, but at the same time, there are moments where the slapstick comedy does get a little chuckle out of me every once in a while, but... Other than that, though, this organized crime is kind of... It's a mediocre movie. I've seen far worse. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's going to leave too much of a lasting impact with me, but that's just my thought on it. Disorganized crime came and went. wasn't a big hit, and um, we all moved on, so... Let's move on to the next movie, and that is Kurt Russell and Kelly McGinnis in Winter People. Kelly McGinnis, always into trouble, getting others into trouble, has to choose between the father of her child. You tell me who the other one is. And the man she loves. I want to stay there. <laughs> Kurt Russell, Kelly McGinnis, Winter People. Would you believe me if I told you the same man that directed this movie would direct Weekend at Bernie's the same year? Yep, the director of this movie is the same man that would make one of the biggest surprise comedy hits of the year. But we'll get to that film when we get to that film. But Although right here, this movie is about as dead as Bernie was in that movie. This was a lackluster movie. I mean, two very good actors, Kurt Russell and Kelly McGillis. Kelly McGillis coming off of The Accused at this point. But, um... Yeah, it's a pretty forgettable movie. It's melodramatic. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Sometimes the visuals of the cinematography can look very nice, but other than that, yeah, it is pretty forgettable. So that's my quick review of Winter People. Just came and went like with Disorganized Crime, although Disorganized Crime had more to it than this movie did. Let's go to the last film, Under the Boardwalk. For each of them, <laughs> these are the moments that last a lifetime. Under the boardwalk. Directed by the same man that did Children of the Corn, produced by Roger Corman. Uh, this is about... It's about as generic as these, ty these type of movies are. It's always a movie about... These kids during spring break or the su or in the summer, they're going is they have to go to this big surf contest, all that kind of stuff, and uh, that's that's really all about it, man. I mean, I mean, it's it is what it is. Like if you've seen stuff like if you've seen those those hokey '60s beach movies, from the ones that Frankie and Annette and that, that Frankie and Annette used to do, it's pretty much this. Even though. Frankie and Annette made a better mo made a better beach parody movie around the same time, Back to the Beach, which I highly recommend checking out. That came out two years prior pri after this, two years prior to this release. I mean, 
But, uh, yeah. Another one that just came and went. Nobody really saw it. I watched it a little bit. Honestly, don't remember too much about it, but it didn't leave much of a lasting impact with me. And not surprisingly, I don't think it did with many other people. So, that's my quick thoughts on Under the Boardwalk. And with that said, we're going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next week, Stephen King enters the fray with Pet Cemetery. We've also got Speed Zone, a.k.a. Cannibal Run 3. One of the most iconic movies of the of the year that year with Kevin Costner. A movie about a teen witch and some other st movies as well. It's going to be a busy, w busy week next week, so, or the next time we talk about these movies. So... Thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the playlist below, check out a previous episode, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Until then, take care.